back at the beginning of 2022, I set out a very aggressive five-year plan for this channel, where I wanted to get in my career by the end of that five years. And the hitch pin of the entire thing to get it all started was building a teardrop trailer. Something somewhat outrageous that will allow me to exploit some of my developed skills, show off a little bit, but each step would allow me the opportunity to teach something new to the general audience. And by doing that, the teardrop would open up opportunities. A, I could showcase what I could do, so maybe I could get sponsorships for bigger projects in future years. But the actual trailer itself is something I could use on the channel to travel and make unique content that other people can't. And in 2022, I actually had to learn a new skill, welding, to do all this. Acquire tools, all that kind of stuff, because the idea was I'm coming from nuts and bolts and building everything up. Right now, if you're building a house, I've done the equivalent of purchase the land. I haven't done any foundation work or underground work or water tanks or anything like that. I just got the land. And it took me till the middle of 2023 to have a licensed, registered, legal, insured, ready to rock and roll trailer to go. But since then, I've been kind of spinning my wheels. My goal was to have it done by now and testing it at this time of year so that I could be traveling in 2024. Quite obviously, that's not going to be happening. So to guarantee that that isn't pushed back yet another year, I'm doing something somewhat radical. I'm liquidating all the excess tools I own. And for somebody that actually tried to open up a woodworking school twice, there's going to be some nice things out there. That's just money that is sitting on the shelf, assets that I could be using to create something that would actually benefit me instead of just collecting dust. So let's go in the shop and I'll give you more idea of what I'm talking about. My last video was a shop tour remodel. And one of the side benefits of doing that remodel at this time is I went through and put hands on every single tool I own and made a decision. Am I gonna use this in the next five years? If no, I'm offering it up to the general public. Now, all the stuff that is shippable, you mean things that are you know, that big, uh, I'll be putting on my website and showing y'all here now. Some of the bigger things, like the power tools, uh, you know, drill presses, that kind of stuff, I'm putting on Facebook Marketplace, and down in the description, I will put a link there uh, to all that's gonna be available. If it's on those sites, it's still available. Uh, the one on my website, if I have multiples or something like that, if it gets down to zero before I can take it off, understand that's kind of the inventory control. I'm not gonna be talking about any prices here, but it's gonna be a huge discount because I'm just trying to liquidate current assets in order to build future assets. So anything you buy, understand, I'm just gonna be using it to make more content for y'all. So to start off, this is a lot of the tools I set aside when I shut down my school with the hopes that in the future I could reopen the reopen school or try again. And at my age, that's getting less and less of an option. Uh, I probably would have been better off just selling all this stuff when I shut down the school and reinvesting that money, paying off debts, that kind of stuff, uh, than holding on to it. Because for the past seven years, it's done nothing for me to earn a living. Now, some of y'all, uh, I did do a hand plane drive when I opened the school and I had a lot of people that sent me uh, some hand planes that I could restore for students. So I had one plane for every student. Understand this is the last of those and I promised y'all that I would never sell them. I would only gift them to other schools. Uh, this one is going to a school that is opening it up uh, as a donation from y'all. And once again, I engraved all y'all's names in these. So you always get credit for donating it to a wood school and it will be used by students. That's the last of the gifted items that I haven't given away. So let's start out over here. I have a dozen sets or almost a dozen sets except for the ones I've given out of the Veritas carcass saws. I highly recommend these. I like them. I have the carcass saw and the cross cut 
and rip, and then I have jet saws set for rip in the for dovetailing. This was a set of tools plus uh, the Stanley Sharp tools that I used to teach with. I will probably be selling them in a set so that I don't have to do as much packaging. For those of y'all that are just getting into it, it's probably best to buy them in a set. That's all you need. That's all I use out on my workbench currently. So there you go. Uh, I also have some flush cut saws. I don't know if I will include those in that set I am selling, uh, but these are also from Veritas. I love this particular model. They are flush. The set is flush on both sides of the blade. A lot of times what the, when they make these, they only do the set on one side. So you have to be very careful of which direction you're going. These, they work both ways, which I really do like. I do have a couple sets of braces. I have to retune these. They're kind of grungy, but they work well because I've reset the handles up here. And this is what wobbles out so that they aren't as useful. I also have six hard maple screws that I'd never used on a workbench. I made some extras when I had that. I basically had 12 workbenches in my school and I set it up so I could put a leg vise on all four corners. So at some points in time, I could teach a class of 48, which I did on several occasions, a little dovetailing class. You don't need a lot of space and a leg vise is all, all that really mattered. I also have one twin screw available for sale right here. Same kind you see me use all the time. Uh, I have a bunch of these Olsons. I might include these in the set of saws because it just doesn't really make sense to sell, you know, five, eight dollar coping saw to the begin to the open markets. I do have several hand planes that will be on there. Those will be sold independently. And if you use a leg vise and you want a nice to dress it up, I have some brass pins for the bottom, some left over from the school. Uh, I, these will be on the couple of strokes that I had on every leg, leg vise for students to use. And then we come to the chisels. I basically kept a set of chisels for all my students. Four bench chisels, a quarter, half inch, three quarter, and one inch. And then I also had a mortising chisel, three eighths inch, uh, excuse me, quarter inch, so that, you know, if you're cutting a mortise on a three quarter inch board, which I use a lot in my classes, that's one third. And in that kit, I also included a Shinto style rasp. Uh, you'll see these I have, instead of having a handle on them, I just have the blue tape because I found a lot of my uh, younger students, for some reason the handle got in the way, but if you just put blue tape to protect your hands, they just seem to do better that way. I wish they would make something that's just kind of like a spoke shape or a rasp. That would be great. I will probably be selling those, all five chisels and a rasp as kits in a little tool roll like that. And that will all be on my, on my website. Note, all of the chisels have been flattened on back. Now, flatten to a useful state. Basically, I make sure it is flat for about the first inch, and then it's flattened back. There might be divots on slight spaces, some, some spots. Can the camera pick that up? But functionally flat. That takes about an hour of labor on each of these to get that way. So you figure out 12 sets, five chisels each, how much time I spent tuning these up for y'all. Now, these are the Narex chisels. Uh, they, uh, I really do like these. Uh, the steel is great. I'm not a fan of the handles. I'm not a fan of this little ring set back here, but the steel is awesome. Also the fact that the sides are narrow and even all the way down. They don't taper up. Plus the fact, um, these came from Lee Valley. Lee Valley special ordered theirs to be true imperial sizes. This is not a, a metric facsimile like most of them. From my understanding, Lee Valley is the only one that's doing that, even in the Richter sets, uh, which uses basically the same blade, just a different handle. The way I work, I like stepping off stuff. That's the way I taught. We were using these as measuring tools. 
So if you have chisels that match up with your rulers, that's best. If you have a metric facsimile of imperial sizes, they won't match up and your joints will either become tight or loose and you'll get frustrated. So these are, kind of, you have to get these from Lee Valley uh, if you want the true imperial sizes. Okay, now here's some things that I have available. These are all dusty because they've been sitting on a shelf. I will wipe them down before I ship them out, but I do have some wooden hand planes. These are users. Uh, I have them worked. I do have them flattened and all that kind of stuff. They just aren't pretty. And I basically use them for demonstrations because I found that students could figure out the buttons and the basics of adjusting the blade easier on the big planes than the small planes. And then I use them some for uh, flattening bench tops. Uh, other things, uh, I have a, a, a 3 8 inch Sorby chisel. And I have a scrub plane here, which I don't have all the parts for. I don't even know if I will put that up. It's kind of a waste of time. I have a couple Miller Falls handles. These are tight. Uh, work, whoops, work pretty well. This is one of those Buck Rogers versions. It's kind of beat up, but it is tight and it works well. The students really liked using these. This one is missing the little screw cap and because these are Buck Rogers, you know, they were the one, one of the first ones in the 40s and 50s to use this high impact plastic in their tools. Uh, that's why they're so collectible. Uh, you just can't make a new one out there. Uh, I am also going to be putting up some Japanese saws probably as kits with the replacement blades just because I don't use those kind of saws. And I have quite a few of these Stanley's uh, sharp tooths, which I'll put up for sale, or maybe not. I, it might not be worth selling, but if I do, I'll include a replacement handle for them so that they, they can fit like a distant saw. Now, here are some tools that I'm kind of hesitant to put up on the market, uh, but they aren't sort of doing me any good. I found one of my coveted Bodart mounts. I just need to finish up, so that will be up there. People email me almost monthly asking for these. I have a set of butt chisels that my dad gave me, completely flattened, completely usable. usable. I just don't use them very much. I also have some Buck Rogers and Stanley style push drills available. These are kind of collectible out there. And then my very first hand plane, which I will put a blade in there that I made. This is from the Hawk Tools, the kits they made back when they uh, included Ligdom Vitali or however you say that right there. So if anybody's interested in collecting stuff. I also have three prototypes of a tool I've been wanting to make for a long time. They are accurate enough for woodworking. They weren't accurate enough for me to go into production. So these are somewhat unfinished ones, but if you just want a nice tool, just like the one I use all the time, uh, just mine's made out of wood. And what it is, is a 90 degrees here, one in seven here and here. Some of them I've included the 45 here uh, the edges are kind of sharp because I haven't put them through deburr, but if you're interested in something collectible, that might be it. I also, one of my more popular videos was making a French square from a scrap piece of wood. Now, this is not like my production ones, which I have a lot more features, including these cutouts on the middle. This is sized perfectly for quarter inch for layout features, that kind of stuff. But this is the exact one that was in that video, including the piece of paper I glued in because it was a little bit tight uh, to correct an error. So if you're interested in something that was seen by half a million people being made, all with hand tools, that's gonna to be available. This is one of the first things I ever bought as a tool. Uh, it came from Heritage Vill uh, Village. It was made by the blacksmith. It's just a router tool. I'm hesitant to sell it, but I might. And then I have some uh, molding planes that are available that I'll put up for sale just because I, I bought them for demonstration purposes, but in the stuff I build, I don't really use them. I also pulled out some Krenov-style planes I made about 
12 years ago. Uh, these are reverse intils. They are filled with lead. This plane right here is heavier than most number fives. A little block, uh, I use this as a uh, smoother. I use that one as a jack, and then this as a jointer. I use these before I started my YouTube channel on pretty much everything I did for three or four years. They work great. I really do like the weight. The weight is from BB's drilled holes in. You can see I've got a magnet right here where it just sits on the holes right there. And those BBs are encased in a kind of rubber polymer so they can kind of wiggle a little bit. These take all vibration out when you're tuning. They have such a unique feel to them. And they were the foundation for what I started doing in my production. It's just my production planes. I went with more angles because I, these are just a lot more ergonomic than these. Uh, these, if you were to, you would tire using these all day long. I don't tire of using this design all day long. That's why I went with this for production work. But most of the time, if you're just building one project, you're not using a jointer, but for jointing a few edges at a time. So they worked out great. It's just things like that we keep for the sentimental value instead of the usefulness. And I would write. I would rather see somebody make lots, a lifetime of stuff with those than just for them to continue to collect dust on my shelf up there for me to pull out every now and then to show people what I used to make. Yeah, I don't want to sell them, but it just makes sense to sell them. Next, let me show you some of the power stools and some of the stuff Dad wants to get rid of. Once again, I'm not going to be shipping big stuff. Uh, so anything this size or bigger, it's just going on a local channel, and I'll put a link to those down below. I have one of these is almost brand new, got from the factory. It's one of those situations that um, I burned mine up, and I've kept it uh, for parts. And I went and bought a second one because I was in the middle of a production run, and I didn't have time to repair the one that burnt up uh, to, for parts to come in. So I just went and got me a new one. Dad has one, so basically it makes no sense for us to have three. One for parts, one that works as a backup, and one that we use. So I'm selling the backup at uh, backup locally. I have some air compressors here. I have some centering jigs from Dad. I have some motors, spare motors. Those will probably just go local. I do have several quarter cable air compressor uh, guns that uh, nail guns that I'll be selling. Um, one of them I do do know that needs its O-rings replaced because it's leaking a little bit, but I just don't use those uh, very often. And I have some uh, battery powered ones that are a little bit more useful that we acquired in this past year. I do have a bunch of sharpening stones that I will be putting up for sale, sharpening setups. And a lot of sharpening jigs and everything like that, and those will probably be sold as sets. In addition, I have a motor, and I'll put the details of it. Um, it's, a, it's a really nice motor. Dad did not want to... Uh, he's had me store all these years for use, for use because it's so nice. Dad has one of these uh, Delta um, sanders, disc, and belt right there. The belt stands up like that. Uh, I think this platform is busted on it, but I'm not sure what's wrong with it. I'll investigate that, and that will go in the ad that I put on the local sets ads. This is one of those things I bought a long time ago. I or Dad bought one a long time ago. I thought it'd be a great idea. It's a rotisserie that on little things. Never used. New, pretty much new in box, but minus the fact that it's been in, bounced around to four or five different shops over the, over the years. Uh, I have two uh, six inch grinders, perfectly working condition. We just have an excess of grinders in the shop. I also have one eight inch grinder. All of them will be have friable wheels. All of them are probably too heavy to ship. So there's that. Have pretty much a new in box, never used uh, jack, 
uh, anybody interested in that's what I'm dad's uh, this right here is a porter cable gun that will go with that set I will probably do or I might sell them separately that I think has some o-ring issues involved with that um, just got set aside never used again we have two engineering uh, granite or marble blocks I forget what they do the high dollar ones engineered flat for sharpening purposes I had one dad had one and in a couple years ago I acquired a really big one because these weren't big enough for one a production project I was doing so now these are extra and we have one really large nice one that we will use if we need to dad has a new in got in in a box an air nailer uh, it's a 15 gauge uh, finished nailer I know nothing about this um, but I'm not sure he has ever used it. Oh, here's all. Here's the prototype to those three planes I showed you. It is lead lined. I ended up cutting off the, the brass long base that I had on there. But it's a working plane and I have a blade for it if anybody is interested. Uh, it's kind of a little, a little bit more of a Krenov style, but... It was where I was experimenting with rounding over instead of bevels, and it is lead lined. Not as heavy as the other ones. I didn't put as much lead in this one, but I'll, I'll put it up available. And Dad has a roto zip. I'm actually not sure what this tool is, but he's offering it for sale if anybody knows what tool that is. Then I have a box of a whole bunch of stuff. Dad has a new in-box Veritas grinder tool rest. I have one out of box, so we're going to have two of these available on the website for shipping out. I have a couple rabbit planes that I restored when I first started woodworking and I've never really used, so those are up for sale. And then I'm putting a bunch of ec extra power tools and stuff like that up, including grinders and stuff that we have duplicates of that we don't, just don't really need anymore. A lot of corded tools uh, we have. And that's pretty much it. As I find more stuff, I will be putting it out there. But it gives you a general idea of the tool liquidation that we're doing here. As I said, all this is just to raise the money to buy the wood and aluminum for that teardrop so I can get started building that throughout 2024 and to pay for some basic traveling that I could do this year uh, since that teardrop is not available. Uh, all the expensive stuff for that teardrop, you know, the refrigerator, the water heater, the water tanks, a lot of the electrical stuff, I already acquired. I did that in COVID because I thought I would be getting to this a lot sooner, and those were scarce. So some of those, so those were some of the first things I acquired. I've just been struggling to afford the pine, uh, maple, and uh, aluminum to finish up the rest of it. And that's my goal with this entire thing. Eliminate what I don't use in order to build what I will. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I will delete the video after the sale is all done. And we will get started. Have fun. Be safe. And remember, it's always worth the effort to learn, create, I'm not doing anything. I'm just selling this time. Have fun.